Welchman is now recognized for five minutes. Um, Chairman Cicilline, a ranking member, Sensenbrenner, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to testify on the pending merger between T-Mobile and Sprint. My name is Scott Walston. I'm an economist and president and senior fellow at the Technology Policy Institute. TPI is a nonprofit, nonpartisan think tank that focuses on the economics of innovation, technological change, and related regulation. TPI takes no institutional positions, so this testimony reflects only my views. The key question when reviewing the pending merger is whether the expected efficiencies gained from combining the third and fourth largest wireless firms outweigh the possibility that the combined firm could harm competition. To address this question, I make four points. First, this merger involves more than the usual level of uncertainty because it involves a nascent technology just beginning to be deployed. Because we know so little about 5G, claims regarding optimal market structure are speculative and difficult to evaluate. Second, the empirical literature evaluating four to three wireless mergers is inconclusive. Some studies find that prices increased after some, such mergers, some find that prices decreased after such mergers, and some find that prices did not change. Third, the uncertainty about new technology and the lack of evidence that four to three mergers, four to three mergers necessarily lead to competitive harms mean the government has little basis for blocking the merger. Fourth, because T-Mobile and Sprint may serve more than 50% of wholesale and low-income consumers, Antitrust authorities should carefully consider the potential effects of the merger on those groups. T-Mobile and Sprint argue that combining their resources, particularly Spectrum, will allow them to build a higher quality, more robust 5G network more quickly than either firm could on its own. Opponents contest this assertion. Evaluating this claim and whether it would benefit consumers if true is difficult because we know little about 5G supply and almost nothing about demand. A market with more firms experimenting with different technological approaches and business models may yield better social outcomes. On the other hand, given the risky nature of investing in a new technology and likelihood of making mistakes, a market with fewer but stronger firms may yield better social outcomes. Real world evidence of the effects of previous four to three wireless mergers finds that even with the current tech LTE technology, mergers did not consistently lead to one particular outcome. One paper that reviewed 13 studies of four to three mergers found no consistent effect on prices. In short, real world experience provides little reason to believe one outcome is more likely than the other. That also means we did not have consistent evidence that the merger would necessarily harm consumers or competition overall. And without such evidence, the government has little reason to block the merger. Opponents, however, have also raised concerns about low income and wholesale consumers. And the horizontal merger guidelines note that the government should consider how a merger might affect different groups of customers. While T-Mobile and Sprint serve about 30% of all subscribers, available public data suggests they serve far larger shares of wholesale and low-income subscribers. Wholesale and low-income service overlap, but are not identical. Facilities-based providers sell wholesale network access to other companies who resell it under their own brands. Resellers off offer traditional wireless services, often prepaid, and Internet of Things connectivity. Estimates suggest that T-Mobile and Sprint currently provide more than half of all wholesale connections, and their annual reports show increasing number of wholesale subscribers. Low-income subscribers probably rely disproportionately on prepaid plans, but not all prepaid plans rely on wholesale networks, and not all, all wholesale plans, wholesale-based plans are prepaid. Low-income and wholesale services are therefore related but different. One survey suggests that T-Mobile and Sprint directly serve almost half of consumers of annual incomes of less than $50,000. The true number is probably higher when also considering wholesale. A combined T-Mobile Sprint holding more than 50% of subscribers in these segments is not necessarily a problem. Whether it is depends on whether they could profitably raise prices without encouraging more entry by AT&T, Verizon, or others. Antitrust authorities who presumably have access to the actual data, the proprietary data, should study these segments carefully and evaluate whether some conditions may be necessary. The government can do a lot to promote competition. The FCC and NTIA should both continue making flexible use spectrum available. The FCC should continue removing obstacles to hopeful entrants like low Earth orbit satellite broadband companies, OneWeb, SpaceX, and Telesat, and IoT wholesaler Legato. We do not know what the 5G world will look like. That's the nature of innovation. But without evidence that the merger is likely to lead to bad outcomes, there is little reason for the government to oppose it. But it should carefully consider low income and wholesale segments where the merging companies have a particularly strong presence. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to answer questions.